Hey folks, welcome to the furnace. This is Captain Dave Sport Fishing, Jacksonville, Florida. And it's a furnace. Woo, man. Yeah, I can't do anything here in the shop or on the boat in the midday like it is right now without sweating to the old. It really doesn't get much hotter than it does right now. The way I always look at it is summer starts way back before Mother's Day in Jacksonville. That's basically when summer starts. So then what do you got? You got all the way to 4th of July, okay? And then it sort of does this. And that can wave back and forth. Some people will say August is the hottest. But in all reality, as far as the fishing is concerned, many times, 4th of July, this period, this week, is when summer's about half over. Thank God. But with that said, since it's so damn hot, I personally, oh, that's the wind slamming my garage door, I personally, you know, consider myself pretty much the king of maintenance. But, you know, I'm, I actually get tired of it. I got tired of it in my last three engines, four engines. And I see people that don't do much, and they seem to get by. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's usually not me. So, it's... About two years plus, I believe, May, May 8th, I think was two years on my newer Suzuki 250. And I have taken care of it as much as I possibly could. Gear lube, anodes, flushing, oil changes, uh, absolutely pristine clean fuel but one thing I haven't done is I haven't looked at this part right here and this is the Suzuki T-Stats here's one right here your thermostat you know if there's a time to look at your thermostats it's when it's 110 degrees in the shade in Florida. I'm no mechanic, but for some reason everybody thinks I play one on YouTube. No, I'm a guy who's trying to get by. That's all I am. So I am going to change my thermostats today and take a look at the old ones that have been in there for two plus years and about 430 hours. That's all I got on my engine, 430 hours. I spend 99% of my time anchored up. My whole motto is burn less gas, less driving around, more lines in the water. So this is your part number for your 250 Suzuki. It is, as you can read right there, it is if you want to take a screenshot of that or pause, it is 17670-90J20. That is the part number for the Suzuki thermostats. And you know what? Unlike a car thermostat, they got you by the balls. Because these things run 40 bucks. And I believe, you know, you go for in a car and you go get a thermostat for, you know, $15.99 at Advanced Auto. <laughs> We're going to change this out and it's so simple because all you need is a ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket, and I just, I use an extension. So let's get up there and let me show you what you're going to need to do. All right, first you're gonna bust a gut taking your cowling off. There's mine, 
sitting right there in the Lazy Boy, enjoying life. Mr. Cowling, Suzuki Cowling, do you need a PBR? No, you're pretty comfortable? All right, I'll get back with you in a little bit. Take, it, take a chill pill, enjoy the Lazy Boy. All right, so here we go. After that busts your gut, pulling that thing off, the first two screws you usually do are just these right here because these go into these clips here, All right? See them clips? So you're gonna take them and then you're gonna pop them off of these little grommets with those hooks. Very easy. Okay, you do both sides. That's this side and this side. So these are the first two screws I always do. You don't have to do any screws here. Rookie mistake is taking the screws out of your like plenum here or whatever they call this for your air intake for your whatever back in here. <laughs> so then you've got your top under your flywheel. You got a screw here. You got a screw over here. You got one here. I believe that should be it. So let's lift this off. Now you're gonna have a hose under here. Let me get down a little bit and show you. You're gonna have this hose right here and it's going up in there. So, hold on, squeak coming. Okay, so I don't even undo that. I just usually try to cock it one way or another here to get to the thermostat. Thermostat housings. Okay, there it is. It's kind of hanging, and I didn't undo that hose. Where's your thermostats? Right here and right here. I'll tell you the biggest deal for this, being a non mechanic y kind of guy myself, let me swing the camera here a second. Being a non mechanic y guy myself, what always scares me, <laughs> it's kind of funny, is I'm going to drop one of these screws down in there. And then that'll be a real pain to get that out. So let's take a look at what's down there with the old flashlight, pocket flashlight. Okay. There's not much down there, but it is the abyss if you drop a screw down in there. So let's not do that. And I always try, it seems like, you know, of course this this one here is up high, this one down here is low. So this one has the hose in the way of that bolt. Because you're not taking any of your hoses off. You're just taking these caps off to expose your T-stat. So let's take this one off first. All right, I hope you can see Hope there's enough light. Now right, let's get in here and pop these off. All right. These shouldn't be excruciatingly tight. They should not be at all. I mean, all it is is a cap to the thermostat. All right, so. I like to back my hand up and take these off because good God, you don't want to drop anything. All right, so. Yeah, if I was a mechanic, they certainly wouldn't be paying me top dollar for the sheer fact that, now you gotta set these someplace. Because I'm not very fast but I guess you get to be fast with practice but I don't need to have practice all I need to do is do a job right 
And that's all you need to do is just get her done, do your maintenance. It's because it's the old pay me now or pay me later. All right, I'm going to set these right here. I need to have my rag handy because I got to wipe the sweat off my face. So let's do a little poppage here. And there she be. She stuck right in there. And she looks absolutely perfect. No broken rubber. Got a little schmutz on there. That's no big deal. No big deal whatsoever. All right. So with this one where you can push it sort of out of the way, you can get in there. And now you need your extension. Or I use an extension. And get in there and loosen this jobby up here right uh, here. All right. You know, temperature is a big deal. I remember reading on one of my YouTube videos about doing maintenance about a guy saying, I'm in South Texas. I run through a lot of dirt. I run through a lot of sand. We're running in really super shallow water. I don't need a thermostat. I don't need a thermostat is exactly what he said. Well, he may have one crappy running engine because you know, these things run at a certain temperature. Okay, now make sure when you're doing this, you do not drop one of the bolts down in there. This is where it gets to be a little hairy, especially on this one right here. Okay. I'll have to back my hand up underneath of it. Just in case. Whew. Okay. Uh, there we go. Now here is number two. Pop her out. And it always seems to me as if one's a little grimier than the other. But these are about equal. I've noticed on some of them, it seems like one's a little grimier than the other. So they're absolutely identical. But it doesn't matter. I've got those new ones. Just because I'm anal and I can have these as spares because I know they're okay. Now you could always test it. You test them just by running a little wire through here, get some boiling water and drop it down in the water and watch it pop open because you know, boiled water, what's it? What's it, 212, 220, something like that? Well, you shouldn't even have to go up that high because these thermostats, I believe are 120 thermostats, 120. And I believe there's another set you can buy for you guys up there where freezing is the reason. Now, one thing you can do is you can get the hose in here and you can blow this out. I like to look down in there with a flashlight. Give it a little inspection. I don't see much. See if there's any super debris in there or anything like that. I see one little spot that looks like there's a little tiny, tiny bit of buildup. Now let me take a look see in this one. Maybe you can see it better than I can because of the camera angle. There's a little bit in here too. 
just some buildup in there. Here's the old ones. They're not bad at all. And uh, we got a little bit on them after two years. So let me show you what you can do. Well, this is a stainless brush right here. You can, without tearing up this, because you're going to now use these as spares, remember? So you can clean these up a little bit. I could probably stick these right back in there. But since I've got the new ones, another thing you can do is I always keep on hand some red lime. D Marine Descaler. All right, well, if you're super anal, you can do it like I do here. I take some of my red lime after brushing that out, the housing, and I go in here and I get some of that scale out of the housing just a toothbrush and a little bit of red lime and let it soak and it's really starting to rain and blow so I need to let this soak and get out of here anyhow all right all right, while it's raining, I figured I'd show you exactly what I told you. There's one before red lime. There's one after red lime. Like brand new. Take a little bit, just on a toothbrush. Now, you know, no mechanic is gonna do this. I'm doing it because it's pouring rain and I got a little hang time here till I can resume. All right, what I want to show you is what they look like inside now. I'm trying to get the camera in there. Look how clean they are compared to what they were. Let me go around the other side here. Hopefully you're going to be able to see. A little bit left in there, but not much. Just did a little red lime soak and cleaned out the housings. All right, see this nozzle? I had a customer give me this. Now I'm seeing that they're kind of popular. This is a rubber nozzle that when you push the end watch let me turn it on when you push the end he called it a truck stop nozzle because almost anything can drive over this without hurting it what i do is i take my hose end and i put a valve so i can turn it on and off and this this on a suzuki Seems to come in awful handy because I just can take this. Whoa, there we go. Let me turn it off and stick it down in a place like this. Hit the, and I can flush by bending it. When I bend this hose, that's when the water comes out. And now I'm back flushing it to clean out any debris that was in there. There you go. And it works on all kinds of places on an outboard. You could stick this in your flushing uh, fitting in the back if you wanted to just give it a once over that, that way real quick. That fits, that, that end fits in about everything. So, I've got a couple of those. 
So let's get these thermostats back to hell in here. Nice clean ones. Push it in. Seat it on there. Get the uh, get the bolts. There's no gaskets, no nothing. The the thermostat rubber is the gasket. Every time I get to do something, it starts to rain. All right, all done. All right. I covered up the intake here when it was raining, of course. And now I'll put this back on. All right, it's really pouring now. Put your cover back on. Drop your wrench down in your cowling. I got a lot more I want to do. before I put the engine cover on. Woo! I used to work out in the heat. All kinds of stuff. I used to do plumbing. I used to do air conditioning. Ah. I just, I just don't care for the heat. I care for cooler weather a whole lot better. Ah. Well, I said in the beginning that there was other things that I'm going to do. And one of those was I always pull out my anodes. If my engine cover comes off, I pull out my anodes. It just gives you, I don't know, to me it's kind of like a thermometer. It tells me, you know, it tells me the health of what's going on. They work very bad at all. I mean, I don't change them out unless they're pretty much ate away with a bunch of holes in them. So right here is three anodes on each side of the engine. I'm not gonna go through every single one. You got one on the other side. You got one down below in the um, low water pickup, all that. I've got an entire playlist of me doing all the maintenance myself on my engine, working on my boat. I'll put that playlist in the video description below and probably the first comment, which will be the pin, what they call the pinned comment, which stays right at the top. I'll put my, my uh, boat maintenance and all that playlist so you can look through, see a shade tree just like me. I got one little advantage. It's because I've got a a good subscriber his name is Orowalk on YouTube and he is what I call my chief mechanic he's actually I'm in Jacksonville Florida and he's all the way up in Long Island New York but we do text each other back and forth a lot so I just texted him uh, a little while ago when he replied about you know, checking the thermostats because he works at a shop and they do a CYA, you know, the old cover thy ass. And they do it every two years or every other season, they change them out just so a customer doesn't have a problem when they, they leave. Another thing that I ask him or I asked him before, and I'm, I, I re asked again, is if you've got a Suzuki, I don't know, maybe it's Yamaha the same way. When your oil dipstick, and it may be because of the way my boat is sitting here, I don't I don't know. I don't think so. It's, it's not level. 
See, that's what brought on the heat. The heat was so intense that the thunderstorm started. That's what happens here almost every day when you get really, really, really bad heat. So, when it's sitting here in the position in which it's supposed to be, which is your dipstick says oil dipstick here or something, okay? And it's the flush side is out. And on the other side, it's got this little like, uh, on the back side, it's got this groove, but on the front side, it says engine oil and it's flush. Do you know, this is my second Suzuki, that if I put it in the way it's supposed to be, and I go down and go, bloop, one potato, two potato, pull it out. And I look at my level. It's all, it's all over the place. It's all over the place sometimes. I can't get a real good reading. But if I turn it around backwards and have this groove right here facing outwards, and I go down and I go one potato, two potato, and I pull it out and I look at that side, I get a lot better reading on it. I don't know why. I asked Orwalk if he runs into that. He's made mention to me before that <laughs> these dipsticks, you kind of get all kinds of goofy readings. So I don't know what it is about them. One potato, two potato, pull it out. right at the mark I don't know that's just one of those things that I'll let you know as a Suzuki owner other than that I think I'm going to put the cover on button this up and since 4th of July is coming I have my engine cover that I usually put on here which is referred to as a splash cover it's to prevent any nicks and paint and bangs in the paint on my Suzuki cowling. So what I always do around this time of year is put on my engine cover, which is stars and stripes. All right. It rained before. <laughs> now it's really pouring down. I'm ready for 4th of July. There's my holiday engine cover, also known as a splash cover. And you can see it breathes right through all these holes here. So people ask me all the time, how's that thing breathe? Well, that's how it breathes. Just like on this black cover here on my kicker, it breathes right through this mesh right here. Same thing. And this is my festive 4th of July. I put that on my engine every single 4th of July. And then this year, I decided to put up a couple flags. I got a tattered flag there, a brand new one right there. And up here in the bow, I always sport one right up there so I actually had somebody ask me one time why do all boats have an American flag on them is that like something that's mandatory when you own a boat and I said nah it's not mandatory it's just that there are people that are patriotic for the United States of America I came up I came up with a thing for Independence Day. Yes, it's the independence of our country, but at the same time, let's make it something else. Let's make it independent of all the libtards and all the swamp creatures in Washington DC. Let's be independent of them. 
How about that? That's how I'm going to think of Independence Day until 2024. It should be independent from all their libtard horseshit. So, there you go. And that's how you change your thermostats with a little extra thrown in. So I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, I put a playlist in the video description of my boat playlist where I have all of my maintenance from lower unit to changing the oil, everything. There's changing the trim and tilt motor. There's hanging my kicker. There's everything on there that has to do with the boat. The boat and the Suzuki and the Mercury. Everything's there. If you want to look it up, there's something else that you're interested in. So I'll see you on the next one.